Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. It's good to be together and start off this year in the best way possible to worship God together, to uh, gather and encourage one another uh, to uh, yeah, have a, a year ahead that keeps our eyes focused on Christ, he keeps our hearts pointed towards uh, our community um, and speaking the name of Jesus to all those around us. So good way to start. Well done. I'm going to read from uh, Philippians chapter two this morning. Um, and wild horses can't keep Bob back from uh, coming up here and exploring this passage for us. Philippians 2, verses 1 to 11. <clears throat> if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of God our Father. Amen. Come on up, Bob. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year to you all and everybody in Zoom land. <laughs> of course, New Year is traditionally out with the old and in with the new. But here at Greenpoint Baptist Church, we bring back the old. <laughs> I'm resurrected from 2021. <laughs> 11.45 last night, I made a solemn promise that I wouldn't make any more bad jokes for the rest of the year. <laughs> I, I managed to hold out. I did make a New Year's resolution, though. I, it, my resolution for this year is to stop procrastinating. I'm probably going to start doing it next week. <laughs> There's a few other little resolutions I heard about. My friend told me that his resolution was to be more optimistic. But then he said it probably won't happen. Something's bound to go wrong and I fell miserably. <laughs> Guy approached me in the street. He said, I've, I've, I've given up social media for the new year. I'm trying to make friends outside of Facebook whilst applying the same principles. Every day I walk down the street, I tell passers-by what I've eaten, how I feel, what I did the night before, what I'm going to do tomorrow. Then I give them pictures of my family, my dog, me gardening. I listen to their conversation and I tell them how much I love them. And it works. I've got three followers already. Two police officers and a psychiatrist. <laughs> my brother told me he went to the gym and lost 10 pounds. I said, that's great. He said, yeah, I've got no idea where I left those weights. <laughs> Zelda, Zelda. <laughs> My sister said that since the start of COVID in 2019, her resolution has been the same every year to keep working on a novel. She said, it's going great. Four years so far, and I've nearly finished reading it. There, my sister. <laughs> Man woke up in the police cells on New Year's Day and he asked, What am I here for? And the officer said, You're here for excessive drinking. Great, he said. When do we start? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I've got that out of my system. <laughs> Put the first slide up, Christopher. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get on with the serious stuff. 
Uh, well done. Right, good. So New Year always brings with it a sense of anticipation. It's that sense of starting again with a clean sheet. The old has gone and the new has begun. The Apostle Paul described Christian conversion on the same way. He said, behold, the old has passed away. We've become new creatures in Christ Jesus. A new beginning, a fresh start. Putting the old behind us and looking forward to the future. And if you were here at my retirement service almost a year ago, I, I, that's, that was kind of the focus. The past is gone and we focus upon the future, what God still has in store for us. And on this Sunday, the first Sunday of the New Year as we gather together to worship the Lord, today we're also going to celebrate the Lord's Supper, communion, and remind ourselves of the very means of our new beginning, and in doing so also prepare ourselves for what still lies ahead. What do you think God's purpose for us will be as a church and as individual members of his kingdom for 2023? Will it be any different from last year? Will we be any different? Will we make the same mistakes? Will we meet new challenges? Will we strive towards new goals? Or will we plug along in the same old way as we have done before? I believe that God always desires his people to meet new challenges, to strive towards new goals as we seek to honor him and to do the work of his kingdom. Just a few days ago, it was Christmas. We focused our thoughts upon the birth of Jesus and the symbolism of the manger, showing the humble beginnings of his life on earth and what that meant to those who were present at or near the time of his birth and what the significance is for those of us who come before the manger and worship him some 2,000 odd years later. Today, the first Sunday of the new year, we're also going to refocus our thoughts on the other wooden symbol of the Christian faith, the cross. And remind ourselves that Jesus' life led from the manger to the cross. Without his death and his resurrection, Jesus' birth would have had little value. The incarnation the crucifixion and the resurrection are the most dramatic events in the history of the world. They are the events that tell us that God so loved the world that he sent his only son to live amongst sinful men and women in the most humble of circumstances. And that the son gave his life as a ransom for sinful men and women in the most horrific of circumstances. And as we look forward to what lies before us today, I want to use the imagery of God as a baby in a manger and as a man on a cross to direct our thoughts towards two things. First of all, the way of salvation. The way of salvation comes through the cross. And how should the saved live? Well, the manger gives us an idea of that of the humility and the simplicity as Christ became one of us. Jesus Christ, the saviour of the world, came into the world as one of us to give his life as a sacrifice for the world, died for each one of us to set us free from the power and consequences of sin which held all of mankind captive. So at the start of the new year, and you have celebrated Christmas, the birth of the Saviour, born in the stable, lying in a manger. But you haven't given your life over to Christ Jesus, the Saviour, who died on the cross for the sin of the world. And let me urge you that the most appropriate thing you can do at the start of this year is to make a new beginning to your whole life by receiving Jesus as your Saviour and literally becoming a new person. This Jesus, who is our saviour, set us an example by which those who have been set free from the power of sin and have begun a new life in the kingdom of God should live as the children of God. The manger and the cross represent the beginning and the end of Jesus' life on earth as a human being, the word made flesh. 
a humble beginning and a glorious, victorious end, the resurrection. So I'm going to make a quick comparison between these two events, the beginning and the end of the earthly life of Jesus Christ, the Saviour. At the beginning, the shepherds in the field asked the angels, how shall we know that this is the Christ? The angels answered, this shall be the sign to you. You'll find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. You will know his authenticity by the simplicity and the humility of his circumstances. The very beginning of his life on earth, Jesus set us an example. You know, most royalty or heads of states or important people travel with large entourage, equipments and so forth. Not so Jesus. If you are the ruler of the world, or if you are, if you are a, a world leader or a ruler, everyone knows about it. Crowds follow you. Everything is laid on. Nothing but the best. Jesus' entourage as the king of kings comes into the world consists of Mary and Joseph and a few shepherds. Now granted, there were a multitude of angels as well, so we've got to throw them out. But there were no fancy goods to make life comfortable. He did get a little bit of gold, frankincense and myrrh later on. People sometimes say, well, what happened to that? Uh, it probably financed his flight to Egypt. By that, I don't mean they bought first-class tickets on a Boeing jet. I mean they flee for their lives as refugees. Jesus' life was not one of luxury, privilege and wealth. When God came into the world, he came as a humble son of a carpenter, born in a stable, forced into a life of a refugee. Authentic Christian living is not found in pomp and ceremony or ornate palaces with lavish surroundings. Authentic Christian living is found in simple humility before the Father and before the world. A humility which is symbolised for us by the baby in a manger. During this past year, we've seen some high-profile funerals. Just about the whole world watched as Queen Elizabeth II was laid to rest in an elaborate ceremony. Now, I'm not saying that as a criticism. I thought it was magnificent. I'm a royalist, and I thought it was a wonderful tribute to a great queen. We also saw the outpouring of grief and respect for some high-profile sports people and entertainment personalities. Shane Warne goes on and on and on and on. Olivia Newton-John. Don't mention just a few. It's uh, that everybody knows and everybody kind of celebrates the life of these people. At the end of Jesus' life, the one who was born in a stable, but who made the most contribution to the benefit of, humility, of humanity, had no state funeral. He was not mourned by many. He was not held up as an example to emulate. He made the ultimate sacrifice, giving his own life for, for humanity, enduring the most horrible of deaths on a Roman cross, some of his friends stayed with him and mourned his death. One of the soldiers who crucified him did make a bold statement, truly this, is, this man is the son of God. But in the end, he was buried in the tomb of a friend. There was no media coverage, just the gospel writers who recorded the event for prosperity. Incidentally, apparently Pontius Pilate asked um, Joseph of Arimathea, why did you let Jesus uh, be buried in your tomb? And Joseph said, well, he told me he only wanted to borrow it for the weekend. Mm. That's a terrible one, isn't it? But <coughs> why did Jesus die in such a manner? The answer is because he loved us so much and because it was for this very purpose that the Father sent him. Humility, Obedience, love, and sacrifice. These are the examples of Jesus' life and death, which are depicted for us in the two wooden symbols of the manger and the cross. If we wish to live as the people of God in the year that lies ahead of us, 
And if we wish to communicate the truths of the kingdom of God to others in a way that makes a difference to them in the world in which we live, we must do so by following the examples that Jesus set. When the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, the living God so humbled himself to become a baby in a manger and a man hanging on a cross. What will that mean for us as we seek to be the followers of Jesus in 2023? Well, firstly, the manger and the cross show us that God came to mankind where he is most needed. If we are to be the followers and servants of Jesus, we must take the message of the gospel and the actions of the kingdom of God where it is most needed, which is not just here in the safe sanctuary of the church or the church family. It is into all the world. If we are to be the followers of Jesus, we cannot be so by simply worshipping him within the community of faithful or by showing the works of the kingdom only within the sphere of those who already belong to the kingdom. Jesus was criticised by the religious leaders of his culture for spending too much time with sinners and outcasts. But Jesus chose not to live his life on earth in the safe and friendly environment of those who loved him and who held the same views that he held. Jesus chose to take the message of hope and love, forgiveness and acceptance to those who most needed to hear it. Even though that brought him into conflict and criticism from those of the establishment, that even brought him rejection and misunderstanding from those he sought to help. But none of those things changed the way he lived because he did not live for himself. He lived for others as the servant of the Father who sent him. And as the Father sent Jesus into the world, so Jesus sends us into the world. I'm sure you have been, you have picked it up that the major focus of our church during 2022 has been to become disciple makers, not just disciples. Disciple makers are people who take the gospel and nurture others. There are many lonely, sick, lost and desperate people in our world, in our own community, in our workplaces, perhaps even in our own families. People who need to know that God loves them in Jesus Christ. They need to hear it. They need to experience it through the words and actions of those who have heard and experienced it for themselves. And I believe this is one of the challenges that lay before us at the start of a new year, to take the gospel message to those who so desperately need to hear it. Even though it may mean leaving our comfort zone and even facing the possibility of criticism and rejection. For it is unto the lost that Jesus always went. It is unto the lost that his church must take the message of salvation. The message that God came into the world as a baby in a manger and died for the sin of the world as a man upon the cross and rose again so that whoever believes in him will also rise from death into everlasting life. This is still and always will be the most relevant and wonderful message to be proclaimed in the hospitals, in the offices, in the playgrounds, to the sick, to the lonely, to the lost, to the grieving, to the homeless, to the desperate. Wherever people are, wherever people are in need of hope, this is where Christ wants to be and where he wants his people to be on his behalf. This is why he was born in a stable and not in a palace and why he died on a cross and not in his bed. Dr. Eugene Thompson said, God did not stay in some far corner of the universe and hope that in some way people would come to him he came to mankind where they were, even though it meant in an ordinary stable. The God of incarnation did not wait for a lost people to come to him. No, he came to us. It is not enough for the people of God 
to erect a church building or run programs in hope that people will come. To be an authentic follower of Jesus will mean we must go and take the gospel message where people are. This is the first symbol of the manger and the cross. Jesus came to people where they were, even though it meant completely humbling himself in obedience to the will of the Father, even to the point of death. As his followers, we too must be willing to humble ourselves in obedience to his will in order to take the message of hope and salvation to a lost and suffering world. And secondly, the symbol of the manger and the cross is that through Christ Jesus, God identifies himself with us in our humanity. By his birth in a stable in Bethlehem and his death on the cross at Calvary, Jesus became one of us. He lived amongst us. He died amongst us. Even more than that, he became one of the lowest of classes. He belonged to the poor and the needy. He belonged to the group that is so often ignored by the rest of society, yet who are so often the ones who are most in need of the joy and the peace and the hope that the gospel brings. We live in what is without a doubt a very lucky country. We are amongst the most blessed people in the world. Never take that for granted. We have a welfare system which means in reality, no one should live in poverty in Australia. Nevertheless, the ranks of needy in our society is a constant growing number. A lot of that is to do with social evils, social injustice, mental health issues. Jesus calls us to have compassion upon those who are in need. He never once tells us to judge them, to condemn them or ignore them. In fact, that's the exact opposite of what he said. Jesus shows concern and care for all people, especially those who are the victims of social injustice, those who are the victim of a sinful nature which governs the human race. And we can look further afield beyond our own shores. There's so much misery and suffering in our world. Many people are innocent victims of the evils of others. Some are just unfortunate to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some are subject to abject poverty with no way out. 2022 was, mar was marred by natural disasters, rampant diseases, and of course war and terrorism throughout our world. This is the world into which Jesus came. This is the world for which he died. And as we look forward to 2023, I doubt whether things will really be much different. The world is in a mess. And it's very much a mess of our own making. But Jesus never isolated himself from the tragedies of human need. He was the friend of sinners. He mixed with the social outcasts, the poor and the sick, the lowest classes of society in order to give them dignity and hope and show them the kingdom of God in action. Those who would seek to live a godly life as the follower of Jesus Christ can never separate themselves from the suffering and tragedies of human need, whether it's brought about by folly, injustice or natural occurrences, whether it's on our own doorstep or on the far side of the world. The manger and the cross brings good news to the poor and the needy. It says that God was concerned enough and loved us enough to become such a person. It is not just at Christmas and Easter or in the clutches of worldwide tragedies that God is concerned for the downtrodden, suffering people of this world. He is always concerned. He expects us to have that same concern and compassion as he does, and to act upon it with the same consistency and urgency that he does. This too is the challenge that lies before us as we enter into 2023. 
as the followers of Jesus Christ? How will we respond to the suffering of others for his sake? And thirdly, the symbol of the manger and the cross is that love is the motivation and the key to godly living. The incarnation of Christ, God in human form, tells us that God does not keep his distance from sinful men and women and shout out to us to repent and be saved or simply leave us to wallow in the consequences of our sin. No, repentance and salvation is the central message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it is given in the context of coming alongside people because he loved them. The manger is solidly linked with the cross. God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The son of God came to live amongst and to die for the people of his creation. Why? Because he loved us. That was the motivation. Love was the motivation for Christ coming into the world in such lowly circumstances as a baby in a manger. Love was the motivation that saw him leave the world as a man dying on a cross. It was love that kept him hanging there to the bitter end. If we are to follow the example of Jesus symbolized in the manger and the cross, we must not only be willing to go to people with the message of the gospel, into the life situations they find themselves in. We must not only seek to address the suffering and injustices of our broken world, but it must be love for others that is the motivation for doing so. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians, if I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gifts of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor, and I give my body to hardship, that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Jesus said, by this will all men know that you are my disciples by your love for one another. Only love could motivate Almighty God to lay in a manger as a helpless newborn babe. Only love could motivate the God of all creation to hang on a cross for the sin of the world. Only love for others, only in love for others, can we ever hope to follow his example and live up to his expectations? The Apostle John gave what was his final sermon when he said, little children, love one another, for love is from God. In a highly sensational, motivated, stimulated world, how easy it is to overlook a simple message of a baby lying in a manger or a man hanging on a cross. But the two go together to make up a simple yet profound message from God, a message that remains the same today as it did over 2,000 years ago. However you look at it, God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, born in a stable, to live amongst mankind, to die on a cross, to set mankind free. His simple message of believe in God, believe also in me, and you shall have everlasting life in the kingdom of God, is that same message for all of us in 2023 as it has been since about the year 24 AD. We who are his church are the ones who must live by and carry this message to the rest of the world. And this will be a sign that it is true. A baby lying in a manger God in human flesh, a man hanging on a cross, a life given as sacrifice for the sin of the world.
This is the gospel we celebrate today in our communion service on the first Sunday of the new year. This is the gospel message that must motivate us throughout the year. So what will be the response? How will we begin to continue to live as his disciples in 2023? What is a New Year's resolution we can make as his church, as his people? Well, again, let me suggest that first and foremost, if you haven't already done so, then let your New Year's resolution be to give your life to Christ Jesus, to make a truly new beginning with him right now. And secondly, if you are a follower of Jesus and you've already begun that new life, then make this your New Year's resolution. Throughout 2023, I will take the message of the gospel to at least one other person who needs to hear it. And I will do so even at the cost of my own dignity and comfort. Secondly, I will seek a means where I can make a difference to the suffering and poverty of the life of the downtrodden people of this world. And I will act upon it. And thirdly, I will look deep within my heart to discover the love of Jesus. And it will be his love for me which will motivate me to act with that same love for others. How marvellous and wonderful to start the new year worshipping the King of Kings and all that he means to us. May we go forward in this year and follow his example and take his message into all our world. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may he guide you and sustain you and inspire you throughout this coming year.